Hello friends! I am really excited about today's video. It's my very first paint with me video. So I'm going to bring you along as I paint this piece and you can see more in depth to my process and workflow and just how I paint. Um, but first I got a new plant and it is my favorite. It's a pilea and it sits right here on my desk and it makes me very happy. <laughs> Okay, let's get into it. This painting is for my sister-in-law who is gifting it to her son who has a bonsai tree that he really likes and he's taking good care of. Um, she took a great picture of it that I referenced as I drew the line work and made the color composition. First thing I do is mix up my colors. So I pull out my palette, my color sheet, and a scrap piece of watercolor paper. To test the test the colors on. I set my color composition up right in front of me to reference as I begin mixing my watercolors um, and matching them to the colors I pulled from the reference photo. This color palette is a, is a lot of blues and greens and teals and aquas and it just reminds me of sea glass. It's so so beautiful. I'm, I'm really excited to paint it. First, I do a light wash to fill everything I'll be painting. So I do to do that, I mix a high amount of water and a low amount of pigment. It's a very watery mixture so that I can get a flat wash. Then I begin slowly working to fill in the line work that's on the paper. I do this light wash at the beginning to help me stay in the lines later. It's easy when I get in the flow of painting to not be totally conscious of staying in the lines, so I do this at the beginning to help me out later. The line work was a bit too light for me to see really well. And this piece is very, very detailed. So I went super slow and referenced the line work the whole time to make sure I was staying in the lines. I picked the lightest color for the different areas of color. So I broke down this piece to three different sections, the leaves, the trunk, and the pot. Then I picked the lightest colors I could see in those three areas and made mixtures of those colors. Then I watered down those colors so I could still see the line work through the paint after it had um, dried. And once that initial wash is down and dried, I start adding more pigments to the piece and building up values and colors and the form and shape. Um, I usually start with the mid-tone of whatever I'm painting, a leaf in this case, and I start defining the shape and loose details I can see from the reference photo and from the line work that I've made up. I'm working wet on dry here so that I can clearly define the middle crease of the leaf. Then I pick up the darker values and start dropping that color into the still wet mid-tone color that's drying on the paper. I continue to build up the colors this way, which really adds depth and form to the leaf. keep working on it until I am satisfied with the way it looks. I'm referencing both the original photo and the color composition I worked up to make sure I'm accurately capturing the colors and building up the forms of the leaves correctly. And I continue doing that and 
and just take it one leaf at a time. And it was so fun to see how different the different leaves were, how the different colors the different leaves were. At this point I ran out of these two colors, so I'm mixing more of them up again. And I realized I needed some of these lighter greens, so I mixed some of those up as well. I really love the gradation of colors in these leaves. Working first wet onto, wet onto dry to define the edges, and then wet into wet, I could really capture those beautiful blended colors by dropping in different colors and letting the watercolor nature of the paint blend the colors together to get these really beautiful gradients of blues and greens. It's really great to work from reference photos because you get richer and surprising color combinations that you probably wouldn't pick if you were just doing it from your mind, like a leaf is green, right? But when painting from life or a photo reference of life, there were really bright teals and aqua colors that initially I wouldn't have picked out for a leaf. But it turned out so beautiful. Next I move to the trunk. I start defining details and creating the texture of the trunk with a mid-tone color. Then I go in with the darkest color and begin working in details and shadows. This trunk is such a cool texture and had kind of striations or really light spots that I wanted to preserve. So you can see me circling those out. Then I blend the dark and mid-tones together in certain places so the details don't have such harsh lines. This part is really fun. I'm using a very wet mixture to fill in the potting medium portion of the painting. And then I drop in more wet mixtures of differing browns and blacks to get a really um, variated, blended, free-flowing watercolor texture for the first layer. After that dried, I went in and began defining all the little rocks. And I didn't want to get too detailed here because I didn't want the look of the rocks to start overpowering the details of the leaves and the trunk and the color of the pot that you'll see here in a minute. So this part of the painting is more muted and subtle. I use a fun technique for the pot that involves salt. So I have kosher salt and then I use this little container of regular table salt as well. The color of the pot is almost a pure Prussian blue, which is a really pigmented dark blue. Later on I decided that the color of the pot had a little more purple in it than I initially thought, so I added some permanent magenta later on to create a more accurate color. I mix up a pretty watery mixture here and begin painting. And I did it in sections, so while the paint is still fairly wet, I drop in some, I sprinkle in some salt. The salt absorbs some of the paint and moisture and it creates this really cool, almost snowflake effect. Um, after the paint has completely dried, I brush off the salt. And you can see the texture it creates a little closer here. Isn't that cool? I do multiple layers of this so I can get the pot to the right level of color and darkness and I had to build up um, that color. So, And I just continue to drop salt in as I painted. continued to build up the form of the pot. And you can see the texture it makes here. I really love how this piece turned out. The colors of the leaves with the dark blue of the pot and the texture of the pot 
Oh, it's just so beautiful. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my painting process and hearing me explain it a little. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.